All right, thanks for watching. And today I want to give you a basic example of uniform continuity. And more precisely, what we'll show, we'll show that f of x equals x squared is uniformly continuous. So you see like uniform continuity, not like UC Irvine, even though both are really awesome, on the interval minus one comma three. And the interval matters. If I give you R instead of minus one three, then uh, it would be false. This would not be uniformly continuous on all of R, but it is on minus one three. On the other hand, it turns out that any continuous function on a compact interval is uniformly continuous. And we'll show that later in another video. But here, we just want to do it from basic principles. So what's the definition of uniform continuity? So remember, f is uniformly continuous if for all epsilon there is some delta delta such that for all x and y so such that for all x and y in that interval minus 1 3 if x and y are close enough together then f of x and f of y are epsilon close so if x minus y is less than delta, then f of x minus f of y is less than epsilon. And here it looks very similar to the definition of continuity, but the main difference is, is that here delta cannot depend on x and y. In other words, uh, there is one delta that works for all the x and y, all the things. So in particular, delta can only depend on epsilon, and we kind of want to manage that to get that. That said, the um, process is the same as for continuity, so let's write out f of x minus f of y and set this less than epsilon. So part one, scratch work. So let's work with f of x minus f of y. Okay, well this is x squared minus y squared. The nice thing is of course we can factor that out. So this becomes x minus y times x plus y. Now here's the thing. So this is the good term, the stuff that we want to control. And this is the stuff, uh, that, that, that's the stuff we have control over. This is the stuff we want to control. And in particular, we want to make this less than a constant. But not a problem at all, because by the triangle inequality, this is less than or equal to x minus y times absolute value of x plus absolute value of y. But now, what is absolute value of x and absolute value of y? Well, remember that x and y, they're in the interval minus 1 comma 3. So this is minus 1, this is 3, and then maybe this is 0 here. And then x and y are somewhere here. Well, notice in particular, the biggest magnitude y can have is 3, because here the magnitude is just 1, right? So it's kind of magnitude 1, 0, up to 3. So absolute value of y is less than or equal to 3, and absolute value of x is also less than or equal to 3. So this is where it's very important to use our, um, the fact that x and y are in that interval. So in particular, this becomes less than or equal to x minus y times 3 plus 3. Okay. And again, just to emphasize here, I just use x and y are in minus 1 comma 3. But then 3 plus 3 is 6. So this becomes 6 times x minus y, which we want to set less than epsilon. Okay. 
and then we get x minus y is less than epsilon over 6, which is perfect because this does not depend on x or y. You see this delta, which is epsilon over 6, it just depends on epsilon. All right, and now let's attack. Let's uh, do our actual proof. So part two, so actual proof, so let epsilon be given, okay. and then let delta be epsilon over six, then for all x and y in your interval of one minus one comma three, if x minus y is less than delta, then let's look at f of x minus f of y. So x squared minus y squared. Well, we found this to be x minus y okay, times x plus y. Okay, and, or maybe y squared minus x squared. Doesn't matter the order. And then we found this to be less than or equal to x minus y times absolute value of x plus absolute value of y, which is less than or equal to x minus y times 3 plus 3, which is 6 times x minus y. And that's less than 6 times epsilon over 6, because this is our delta. And then we're left with epsilon. And therefore, we're done. We've given epsilon, we found a delta such that a universal delta, in fact, such that for all x and y in that interval, if x minus y is less than delta, then f of x minus f of y is less than epsilon. And therefore, we're done and we can stay home happy. All right, thank you very much.